Alrighty, let's talk about the difference of accumulation and distribution. Understand the following is the fact that you are going to be spotting these areas of accumulation and distribution in typical zones such as imbalance zones or also points of interest and potentially in zones of accumulation, accumulation or price. So with that being said, guys, let's get to it and let's talk about how it is that you can identify zones of accumulation and zones of imbalance. So as we can see over here on the charts, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the following. Before we go into charts, I want to show you guys a quick um, description of how it would look like on some writing over here. So let's say that we have a nice zone of imbalance, right? So at this very moment, I'm just going to go ahead and draw out a nice zone of imbalance. And let's say, for example, that we were overall bullish in the market. So if we were overall bullish in the market. We have this nice zone of imbalance right in this section. Let me go ahead and write it out. And we're going to be looking for potential retracements down into these areas of imbalance. So as we start identifying that market is retracing into these areas of imbalance, what I like to look for is going to be for a potential reaccumulation. Now, why is it reaccumulation? Because more than likely, market already had accumulated down over here, create an expansion, and then comes back down, reaccumulates, creates an expansion, comes back, reaccumulates, creates an expansion, reaccumulates, creates an expansion. Now, typical zones where market will be creating that those reaccumulations are going to be zones of imbalance or in areas of order flow. Okay, so before we get into all that other stuff, let's talk about how it is that you can identify the difference between a accumulation and a distribution. Now, first things first is you want to be able to know the overall direction. So if market is overall bullish and it's continuing with its overall order flow, when you see market coming down into zones of imbalance and you start seeing that potential accumulation schematic, then until then you'll be able to see, okay, that is a accumulation because we are continuing with its overall flow to the upside. Now, one thing that I want you to know is as you see above, so you see below. So things are going to happen exactly the same, but inverted. So as above, so below. Okay. Now, what is the schematic that I like to look for? So in this very case scenario for accumulations or distributions, I like to look for the following. Let me go ahead and just erase what I had right here drawn out for you guys. So that way I can go ahead and put it a lot clearer. So typically what you'll be seeing, you will be seeing that market is creating these spikes to downside. Usually you'll be seeing either two spikes or three spikes. And these two or three spikes are eventually creating liquidity. Okay. When you start seeing market creating very good liquidity where market is creating lows, but not so low um, in this very particular scenario, we can see how they, it did create a low, but it wasn't too much lower than the other one. So it's now creating some type of liquidity still maintains its overall um, structure in this case right here. Then we see another move creating more liquidity mark comes back up and then we see this spike. Okay. This spike, this big spike was that manipulation to the downside, which was now incentivizing you to say, Hey, markets continue on moving down. So market, if you are now continuing that markets continue on moving down, look at the following, wait for market to come back up. It's more than likely going to be creating a liquidity point above retrace and then break. Once it breaks, now you know that in this section market had created a nice zone of accumulation and you are going to wait for that retracement into that section of accumulation for a potential continuation. It is going to be a lot safer for you to go ahead and identify that. It's going to be a lot safer for you to go ahead and wait for that spike above that liquidity, confirming that market will go ahead and shift to the upside. And that was a potential reaccumulation. Now, another case scenario, let's say that we were looking at a bearish trend. So we're looking at overall bearish trend market was creating a imbalance zone market comes up into that imbalance zone. And as we can see, market created a nice zone of liquidity. So market created a nice zone of liquidity down below also creates some liquidity spikes up, takes out the liquidity, comes back down and then comes for a potential discount. You don't really want to enter right here. You want to enter once you have a confirmation, right? At this very moment, market could potentially do another reaccumulation or it can do a distribution or accumulation depending on what market wants to do. So that's why you want to wait for market to break and get that liquidity out. And as soon as it gets that liquidity out, wait for that discount and then enter. And in this case scenario, this right here 
would be a distribution schematic. And then on a bullish scenario, we would see that this would be a accumulation schematic. So accumulation schematics are going to be leading you for market movement to the upside and distribution schematics are going to be leading you for the market move to the downside. Okay, so at this very moment, I want to go ahead and show you guys the following, which is what market was doing previously. So we can see this right here, how market was creating a nice distribution. We create nice distribution market was coming to the upside, collecting orders, distribute to the downside. And what are we going to expect to see over here? A potential accumulation, but we need to wait for that spike come back up goes above test and then we can go up back into these levels. So we have our distribution and a potential accumulation that will happen in the near future. I will go ahead and talk a little bit more in depth as far as how it is that you can find a accumulation. What are the things that I take in consideration for it to be a accumulation? And I will also talk about a distribution and what are the things that I take in consideration for distribution on the following videos. So with that being said, I hope you guys like this quick lesson of the difference between accumulation and distribution. The overall scenario of the difference is that you will be finding a distribution on the top areas of the market when market is moving to the downside and you will be finding accumulation zones at the bottom of the market when market is moving to the upside. So typically you want to be expecting these on steep retracements and points of interest and balance zones or accumulation of price. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick lesson. Let me know down below what you'd like to see next. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next lesson. Have a great one. Bye-bye.